Sure. I mean, like, um, you know, Lance and I, we've been in contact some in the last couple of weeks, and obviously I've heard um, some of the comments that you've made. And I guess one of the things, I actually, um, about a week ago or so, I talked to Bret Hart, and we were kind of discussing, Bret, Bret was very, very vocal when he read the lawsuit, um, and you might have seen his comments. But the one thing he said was that, you know, almost he was surprised that, like, almost nobody in wrestling was. And, of course, you were. But and I told him, I go, you know, well, Lance Storm. And he goes, yeah, me and Lance Storm. But how come nobody else? And I really didn't have a good answer for that other than the obvious answer, which is nobody. You know, Vince has that aura. And nobody wants to cross Vince for whatever reason or whatever it is. I don't I don't know. But what's kind of like your your perspective on everything? And also, I would, I would the other thing I'd like to know is like. When this thing, when when the lawsuit broke, like what when you and you read it, or if you or or, or released the excerpts and everything, how did did you have an immediate reaction to it, and was it a surprise or or kind of give me kind of your your mindset of reading the lawsuit? Yeah, I read the entire thing. That was the first thing I did, figuring that probably best to read the damn thing before talking. But yeah, it was weird in that. And I think the way I put it the first time was never in a million years that I expect to read something like that, but at no point reading it, did I doubt it. And, and I, I guess it's, it read so Vince yeah, just on the sexual end rather than just the, you know what I mean? It's like, he does like to bully people. He does like power. He does like control. It's just added that, you know, the element of how he treated a woman in this case. And it's like, at no point did I think that just doesn't sound like him, which is horrifying, I guess, but it's, it was shocking and it, and it read so textbook grooming and sexual predator behavior. And, you know, we, we hear about it when you hear about different cult leaders that do it. And in a weird way, I think that's where it struck me because people have joked for years that, you know, all the cult speak of WB, they make you speak a certain language. They make you conduct yourself a certain way. And, you know, we all joke that it's the wrestling cult, but it's like, it, it is all about power and control. And, you know, we've all heard the stories of him bullying people and shoving them into his pool and yeah, you're right forcing you to talk a certain way and say the certain buzzwords. And it's always been about control. And when it's just, okay, he's controlling you at work and he wants you to talk the way you want to talk on his television show. It's like, okay, whatever, you know, he's a bit controlling, but who cares? But when you realize the depths of how he was treating some women and obviously with multiple NDAs and I guess, I would have been aware of the Rita Chatterton accusation from ages ago, but it's when it all comes together and you read the details of her case and the other NDAs and the, again, the rape settlement from court with uh, Rita Chatterton. It's just like you realize that I guess what a, what a horrible person on so many levels he was because I'm sorry. I just didn't doubt anything I read, even though I never would have expected it. Yeah. I, um, it was weird because like, like uh, there's, there was a lot of, I, I'm, I, you know, I, I've seen a lot of lawsuits, you know, especially in, involving WWE and in the past, a lot of them kind of fell through because of Jerry McDivitt or other things. So I'm always skeptical reading. You know, like, and I, and I know and everything. So, so it's like, I'm, I'm not taking sides. The thing that really turned me was the text messages. Mm -hmm. I saw the text messages. It's like, that's Vince McMahon text messages. That's, 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 that's how he would write a letter. That's, you know what I mean? And it's like, those are real. And, and obviously they were real because you could never, if you put that in, in a lawsuit, these text messages and they weren't real, the lawsuit would be out, you know, in, in minutes. Right. I mean, like, and the, the lawyer would be, you know, just sanctioned to death so just seeing that alone gave incredible credence to um maybe not every single thing but enough to where it kind of like really appalled me and you know one of the things with the, with the vince stuff with me is is that over the years you know obviously covering vince for 40 plus years that um you know the um 
you know, you get these stories every couple of years and everything. Um, and you should, you know, and, and I think what, what ended up happening was, is that I, it kind of like hit a button with me, like, wait a minute, there's all these stories and, um, there's all these NDAs and it's like, I was thinking about Bill Cosby, who Garrett and I've talked about many times before, who had this fantastic reputation and then the dam broke. And then it was like all of this stuff. And I, and I always thought if it's one person, you, you never know, right? But when it's multiple people, you you have to look at it differently, and the the, the burden of of um, belief is going to go with multiple people over one person, no matter how many times he defends himself. Um, and you know, again, the the texts were just like I just thought, like who who would write stuff like that? You know what I mean? It's like it's like it was, um, you know, I mean, I could almost sort of see like a 16 year old boy or a 17 year old boy to a degree, but even then, you know, only like one tenth of that, that was really bad stuff. And, and it, you know, and I think like this company has been run by this guy, you know, with everyone catering to him for how many years for 40 years or whatever it's been for a little over 40 years. And, and what happened was, is he got to where he was immune from the real world, I think, and just thought he could, because he had money, because he had power, that he could do literally anything, you know, and everybody would cater to him. And, and unfortunately with the wrong person with that kind of power, it, it, I think it, it yields this result to a degree, but even then, even then it was, it was really extreme, I guess. Yeah, it, it was. And I, I want to touch on, you know, Jim Valley. Um, Cause you know, he was, is still, I would imagine, you know, so against, you know, it's the company, it's the system. And while I certainly won't dispute that, I think the rest of the company still needs to be investigated and judged. But I think there is, when you are from like literally day one, like I'm talking before WWE, like I broke in the cafe bear and we're taught everything is dealt within the business. Do not talk to anyone outside the business about anything. You can be blackballed. Your career is over. It's the business first. And then when you get in, it's, you know, the boys against the office. Don't stooge to the office. Don't stooge to the office. We deal with it, each other. And then when you get to WWE, it's like, you know, WWE is it. Nothing you did anywhere else matters. And you're trained to, you know, pledge fealty to Vince McMahon. Everything goes through Vince, you know, protect, protect, protect in house. That when you, Again, you see a little bit of bullying and it's like, if you can do something in that moment to help that person, maybe you do, but again, you don't want to stooge anyone off. You don't go outside of the business. So what each person saw, like, again, I was in WWE for what, four years and then four months when I was an agent, I was actually employed by WWE when the, uh, Janelle Grant thing was going on. But obviously she was not at show, so I never met the woman I don't believe. I have no idea who she is. But you see a lot of bullying. And again, you know, you see the Trish Stratus bark like a dog thing, and you go, that's really ignorant. And you see a lot of stuff. But it's it's wrestling, right? Which is a shit excuse, but it's nothing that you can call the cops on. There's nothing. And where do you go in WWE if it's like, okay, Vince is being an ass to somebody. It's like, unless you're willing to quit your job and go to the cops, what do you do? And obviously, you know, with the, the Ashley Massaro thing really hit me. The, the recent, um, yeah, me, 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 you know, it's funny. It's funny when that, that first came out, I thought it was like, very questionable and, yes. and and from a from a sleazy lawyer but then everything that's come out recently you know and 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 certain other aspects that haven't come out that I'm aware of um made it you know very obvious that it happened and it happened mostly probably close to exactly how she said it most likely and if not ex exceedingly close and when you know you you kind of go through that with everything else it's kind of like i mean could could i see vince having a meeting with her going like well you know we get so much out of our relationship with the military 
just be quiet and 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 but but the the, the part was, was weird to me now is in, in hindsight you know not years ago is they never offered her even therapy let alone were sympathetic with her situation and and it's like okay you know you you want to cover it up you know that's bad enough but when you just go in there and it's like i just roll with the punches you know what i mean because that's essentially what don't tell anyone and roll with the punches is is one thing if it's something minor right and you probably had a million things in your career where you say hey just gonna roll with the punches i'm in the wrestling business but but not not like rape you know that's like that's a different a whole different ball game yeah and i was like you when i when i heard the first you know years ago when the ashley massaro thing came out the thing that hit me that i just couldn't fathom was when in the lawsuit she said that they left her behind when they came home I was, I, I just couldn't fathom that a company, any company find the shittiest company in the world would leave one of the talent behind. Cause I've, I've never done an appearance for a major company that there isn't at least one or two office people that stay with you the whole time. And I just couldn't fathom that. I'm like, that's a bridge too far to me to buy. And then I find out it's true. Yeah. And then you feel like shit for doubting the, the, the story in the first place, but the fact that I think the wording was don't let a bad situation ruin our relationship with the military. And it's like a bad situation is, you know, getting stiffed on a payday. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, or having someone, you know, you know, shoot punch you in the face on purpose and break your nose. It's like, okay, it's a shit situation, but being drugged by a stranger and raped. Like, I just, like you say, I could see, and again, I'm not, justifying it or saying it was right i could see if she was scared and not really gung-ho with we need to report this we need to find this bastard i could see a company going well if you're willing to you know but we'll get you therapy we'll do anything you like yeah. how can we take care of you and if she's willing to not blow the whistle i could see a company being fine with that but to not support like you take a person overseas and something that horrendous happens to them and you don't bend over backwards to do anything and everything you can for that person. It's, it's just mind blowing to me. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? Wrestlingobserver.com. You have a commute. Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.